this tutorial we're going to have a look at water soluble coloured pencils and you can see here there's quite a wide variety of colours this is a box of 24 coloured pencils but you can get them in boxes of 6 or 12, 24 right up to presentation cases of 100 pencils or more and you can buy them individually this one happens to be by a German company Faber-Castell but there's also high quality pencils made by companies like Derwent who are based in the Lake District in England there's Karen Darsh who are based in Switzerland and in fact there's many other companies so you should have no difficulty in finding somebody who makes high quality water soluble coloured pencils in your part of the world. Now we don't need many pieces of equipment you can see here that all I've got is a small brush and yet for once you do only need a small brush, a very big brush with water soluble coloured pencils and you're going to flood the area and push the pigment out the way and it's not going to be able to be controlled. So a cheap small nylon brush like that is fine. Or what you could use if you have one is one of these which is a brush that has a barrel that screws off that you fill with clean water and then when you want to paint or move the pigment round with it you just squeeze the brush and you can see I think you can see some drops of water coming out there you're not going to have to press that hard but it does ensure that you've got a constant supply of water coming through to the pigment so that's quite handy if you've got it but if you haven't a cheap little brush like that is more than adequate now you can see that you don't need very much water to work with these coloured pencils here is an old aerosol cap that I've only barely half filled with water and that's more than enough for the purpose. Apart from that you need some paper which we'll look at in a second and a bit of paper towel to clean up and lift out colour as you want it. Right now the paper I'd recommend you use is either heavyweight cartridge paper like this which has a nice smooth surface but because you're adding water and lifting colour out I wouldn't recommend that you use anything less than about a 200 gram cartridge paper. Anything less than that is going to start cockling and buckling very quickly and make it very difficult to get a decent picture down. But it does give you a nice smooth surface and we'll have a look at that a little later on. However I think the best sort of paper you can use is watercolour paper. This is a knot surface which is sort of the midpoint of the, the, the roughness range of watercolour paper. Because it's built to allow you to push watercolours around it's going to have no problem in dealing with watercolour pencils and the texture in the paper also gives some nice effects when you're scribbling on and blending with the pencils. Right now one question you might ask is well how do I know which of these is a watercolour pencil and which of these is just an ordinary coloured pencil? Well the simple answer is that this is a Derwent watercolour pencil and I'll just bring that up a little bit and you can see there I think that it actually says watercolour on the side of the pencil. The Faber-Castell version actually has a little paintbrush icon halfway along so just by looking at the side of the pencil you're going to get the clue somewhere along the line. Now if you're still not sure then the simplest answer is to try them out, suck it and see. Here I've scribbled on some crayon from a non water soluble pencil and here I've put on some colour from the water soluble pencil. Now you can see by adding water to that it does pull some pigment off but the moment you put it on the water soluble pencil you can see the difference. Now you can use watercolour pencils in various ways. You can see already the sort of texture that we're getting where the pencil lead or colour is actually skipping across the top surface of the watercolour paper. So if you wanted to you can use them as you would use an ordinary watercolour pencil or you could blend them by adding additional colour. Let's just put a little bit of warm shadow on this side of the orange. Right now you can see I've blended some warm red, this is actually a magenta. 
but I think what we'll do is add a little bit of shadow. We'll just put a little bit of this blue in again so you can see you're blending a third colour. You're not necessarily making any sort of mud that you might do with watercolour paints if you were blending three colours. I'm a little bit heavy handed on it. Now you can see we've used these three colours here in a dry fashion and there's no need to do any more if you don't want to. So they are versatile, you can use them as a conventional coloured pencil and leave the water out of the equation if that suits you. But of course once we add a little bit of water to the equation you can see the way the vibrancy suddenly leaps out at you. In fact you've got to be careful not to use too much water. You can see how much pigment's coming off on the brush. You can see now why you only need a small brush because otherwise a, a bigger brush full of water is going to start pulling that pigment round rather too far. You can create tide marks if you want or you can blend it more smoothly. Now while that's still wet what we can do is to go back slightly into the colour and because we're wetting the pigment on the pencil you're going to get quite an intense colour so you've got to be careful you don't overdo this. I'm just going to put a little bit of pigment at the bottom here and then just spread that around. I'm just going to also add a little bit more of that magenta. Again you can see because you're starting to wet the pencil itself you're getting quite intense colours coming off onto the paper. Now if you want you can lift colour directly off the pencil with the brush. Put some on a scrap piece of paper, I'm just doing this here so you can see it easy enough, and then by adding a little bit of water you can lift that pigment as if it was a watercolour paint and you can create all sorts of nice effects using this as a paint palette. So you can see how easy it is, you can almost on a piece of scrap watercolour paper no more than two inches by three, you can almost create a little paint palette of your own. Now by putting the pencil directly into the water, taking off the excess, you can actually create some very intense colour like that as well. Just add a little bit of green at the top, mix with the orange and then just a little bit of dark colour just to create that characteristic stalk. Take some water out and just slightly blur off some of the colours so you can get quite a nice subtle effect. Oh yes, if you wanted to you can always lift colour out like that. You can see there's taken a, a little bit of colour out quite subtly. Let's take some out of there just so you can see the effect there and you can see how much colour we were able to take out while the, uh, while the orange is still damp. Or if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to go back in, whoa that's still a little bit wet that, now you can see how dark that orange is that's going back in. Getting some nice textured effects here with the uh, watercolour paper. Now you can see the value of using watercolour paper because had we been trying to do that where we've gone in, lifted off, added another colour, wet the paper again, lifted some more out, then the cartridge paper, even good quality cartridge paper, simply can't stand up to that sort of punishment that watercolour paper can. And if I carry on I'll be fiddling it to death so we'll leave it at that for now. But I think you can get the idea. So we'll stop now while we're winning.